Hey everyone, I wanted to take uh, a little while and explain some stuff on copy releasing. Um, this is our site here, copyreleasinger.com. And there's some basics that are good to start with. And then, you know, we can definitely go from there into um, some of how to save money and other things like that. So um, the first thing is a copy release is basically a way to acquire the copier. And so if you um, purchase a copier, that's one way to do it. You can rent a copier or you can lease a copier. So those are kind of different ways you can acquire the copier in the first place. And then on top of that, you'll have a supplies and service plan, which will take care of all of the ink and the uh, service and parts and uh, labor and delivery and et cetera. So uh, what we're talking about here is the getting of the physical equipment into your office. So getting, let's say, for example, this um, Xerox uh, C8030 and you want it in your office, this is a way to get that in there without putting six or $7,000 down, which is kind of the typical price of the copier, and you know having a monthly payment of $130 to $150 a month. And so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. And so the first thing to know is there are tables, and so I'll show you this on our site, which is, um, I remember where I put the put it here, um, right in here. Um, in this current rates, uh, we put some stuff in here. And so when we're doing a copier sale, we're looking at a table kind of like this. And what happens is we take the term, um, so like on this is a fair market value lease, which means that at the end of the lease, the copier gets returned to a warehouse, and then you'll be responsible for the shipment of the copier to that warehouse, and you'll complete your lease at the um, end of the term. Or there's a dollar out purchase option, which means at the end of the lease, you pay a dollar, and the copier now belongs to you. And so they have different rates, basically because on this lease, they're getting the copier back and there will be a value to that. And on this lease, you're keeping the copier. So that's factored into this um, into this number here. And so what you end up doing is you basically will take the amount that you're financing. So let's say it's $7,000. So if it's $7,000 and um, you are going to do a five-year lease, you would basically be in this band right here. And so you go times 0 0.0195, and you would end up with about $136.50 um, on a fair market value lease. So 136.50. And on a dollar out lease, you would do the same thing. You go to the 60, and you see the 0 0.0208, so you go 7,000 times 0 0.0208, and that's 145.60, so about $9 per month difference. And then nine times 60 is 540, which is about what it costs to ship it back at the end anyway. So for me, I would tend to do the dollar out because then I have an option to run it further uh, afterwards if it's still running great, or sell it on Craigslist or use it as a backup or things like that. Um, other people, they want to have the payment as low as possible, and they're going to depend on the copier company to take care of that shipping fee, which will get rolled into the next lease um, at the end of the lease. So that's kind of two different ways to do a, um, a copier lease. And as you can see, there's these different stair steps. And so between one and $3,000 has a different lease rate factor than between 3000 and 10000 so technically speaking, um, if we go like here, um, actually this is a better example. So if you go 29.99 times 0.0235, and that would be $70.47. So if you're right there, but then if you go 3,000, so you just raise it $1, Then that's fifty-eight fifty. So it's twelve bucks a month, or eleven and a half, and almost seven hundred dollars total. 
So that $1 difference in price makes a $700 total payment difference. So that's one of the things we really try to focus on is how do we essentially make sure that you're in the right part of these stair steps so that you can get the best rates possible. Technically, it may mean adding $100 to your cost to ensure that your price goes down based on the lease rate factor. So um, this is the schedule that we're using, and the schedule essentially will determine what your uh, lease price is. Um, so that's one big thing to know about. And then next, you'd want to know is usually on any of these leases, towards the end of the lease, they have a, a clause that will do an automatic renewal. And so it's always good to mark that into your email or into a calendar system that will let you know, you know, 60 or 90 days before the end of the lease, although your rep will probably be bothering you to swap it out sooner than that. But you don't want to automatically renew the, your copier lease because at that point you've already paid for the copier. Now you're just basically giving the bank extra money. So it's pretty much always a bad deal. Um, to renew if you do it a month or two it's not the end of the world if you start doing it for a year that's you just wasted you know in these examples you know fourteen fifteen hundred dollars so i like to have a reminder put into the calendar that lets me know you know in month 57 or 56 that we're coming to the end of that lease and then making sure that we give the appropriate notifications because there'll be a clause that will say if you don't renew it within this time frame, that you're going to essentially um, have to have it for maybe another three months or another six months or another year, depending on how it's written. Um, one of the other things I really try to look for within a lease is automatic escalations. And basically what an automatic escalation is, is it's gonna take the number, like where we had here, the $60, 58, whatever it was, we'll call it $60 a month um, for that $3,000 copier. And it's going to say every year we have the right to raise up the lease rate a particular percentage. And a common percentage is somewhere around 10%. So the $60 a month will go to 66 and then it'll go 72 then 78 then 84 So by the time you hit the $84 a month, when the rep comes back around, it's easier to say, hey, we can get you into another copier for just $60 a month, basically where you were the, at the beginning. Um, if you didn't have that escalator, then $60 a month, it would be harder to roll the next copier in um, because that escalation makes your lease payment higher each year. So I always would avoid escalators. Um, it's pretty much possible for most copier companies uh, to go ahead and uh, take that out of their contracts. Uh, we'd always recommend that if you're going to lease a copier, that you need to ensure that you don't have an escalation fee uh, for sure. And that, like I said, you mark down when the lease is supposed to expire. Um, the next thing I would pay attention to is basically the idea of coverage limitations. And that's on the supplies and service agreement. And so what that means is essentially each um, copier is rated to do a certain number of pages per toner cartridge. So if you think of it like um, each toner cartridge is like a gallon of milk and each page comes out and it's expecting that you're going to get so many cups of milk out of each gallon because a cup holds so much fluid, you know, so much fluid and you can multiply that out and determine how many cups of milk you're going to get. They use the same kind of logic for pages. So you have a toner cartridge, which has a bunch of uh, toner in it. And each page that you print is going to utilize a certain amount of that toner. And it's based on a, um, a covery trait. And usually that's 5% per color. So the color is 20% because there's four colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Whereas the black and whites, 5% coverage is the typical industry average because it's only black. There's no cyan, magenta, or yellow to account for. So what happens on some leases or some service plans is that if you exceed 5% or you exceed 20% color coverage, then there can be a multiplier added um, to compensate for the toner usage. So if it turns out that you're averaging 30% or 40% coverage instead of 20, your color rate can double. 
um, or time and a half. And so that's something to pay attention to is, is there a, a penalty uh, if you exceed a particular um, percentage within your coverage? And so that's something else that we definitely look at and try to make sure that, you know, if you're going to lease a copy or that you're paying attention to your uh, coverage um, and or getting uh, ideally a lease contract that does not have a penalty on color coverage. Uh, that makes it easy. You don't have to think about it. Um, you also want to see what your overages are. And overages technically should be lower in price, not higher, if you exceed the base. And so normally what will happen on a base is that you'll get a certain number of prints. So we can use an example of 10,000 prints. And so you'll get 10,000 prints a month. Uh, let's say they're all black and white, just to make it simple, and they're a penny a piece. So it's $100 a month, and you get 10,000 prints. And then once you exceed 10,000, you get billed per print for any prints that you do over 10,000 prints. So if you do 11,000 prints, then the last 1,000 would be billed at the overage rate. Um, a lot of times I've seen that people will make the overage rate higher than the base rate, which doesn't really make that much sense because most of the service should be contained in the first part and the overage should be cheaper uh, because the service is already contained in the in the uh, base because the copier company is going to want to make sure that their um, service department is whole so they're going to make sure that the service is in there no matter what and then once you exceed that base the service part has more or less been taken care of of course the more prints you do, you will have more service calls. So there is more service expectation. Um, so you would expect more service calls, but the cost is going to be lower because you don't tend to find a one for one ratio there. And so if you're at a penny per page for 10,000, our expectation would be is once you exceed 10,000, it should be nine tenths of a penny or something like that. It shouldn't be, um, 1.2 cents after you hit the 10,000. So keeping an eye on your base rate and then comparing that to the overage and making sure the overage is lower than your base is a good idea. Um, one thing that I have definitely seen is that a lot of customers are concerned about having zero base. Uh, zero base to me would be ideal if I were uh, buying a copier because then you're just paying for what you're using. You're not paying for 10,000 prints and then only doing 5,000 and therefore your effective cost per print doubles. Uh, so I would always personally get a zero base contract unless I got a massive discount for the, the inclusions. So if I went from 1.5 cents down to one, uh, down to a penny and I was pretty sure that I was going to use 10,000 and it saved me, you know, a half a penny per page, then of course that makes sense because I'd prefer to save the $50 per month. If I wasn't sure if I was going to do 10,000, there's no way I would sign up for 10,000 pages because it's likely I'll do 3,000 one month or 7,000. And on those months, I'm going to lose 7,000 pages that I paid for. So I would always say whatever you think your minimum month is that you should do, roughly 80% of that rather than signing up for your average because your average is going to fluctuate. You'll have some months that are higher than your average and some months that are lower. So for me, I would take my lowest month and then I would multiply that by 80% and I would use that as my base. So that way I knew whatever I was doing. So if there's a, um, a pandemic like what we're going through currently that, and nobody's working at the office, I'm not stuck paying for 10,000 pages a month while everybody's gone. So the idea is basically pay for what you use, don't pay for uh, what you're not using. And so that's a really important thing also within your service contract. Um, one of the things that we see from some, some people is, let's take a look at the products here, is if they are looking at different products, what they'll end up doing is getting kind of like, let's say this one here, you know, 219 a month and 70 pages per minute because of speed. And so 
one thing to be aware of is sometimes these really fast copiers like a C8070 will go 70 pages a minute when it's fully warmed up, but it may take longer to warm up than, let's say, like this. Um, well, these are black and white, so let's go to go ahead and go to color ones. So we'll take the same ones here. So um, same kind of deal here. So, you know, basically they will take a uh, fast one because they want it to go fast like this instead of a slower one, you know, like this, because they, they're they thinking 70 pages per minute is twice as fast as 35. Uh, the one thing to be aware of is a lot of these 70, 70 page per minute, anything over like 50 can often take longer to warm up. And then if it's a short job, you'd actually go faster by having the smaller, more compact copier. So it's not always that the higher rated speed is the faster copier. One of the things you need to definitely look at is the warm up time. Because if you don't factor in the warm up time, it could take 30 seconds for one of them to warm up and eight seconds for the other. And so you have 22 seconds of it being able to print and most of your print jobs are gonna be just a few pages. And so you could find that your day-to-day -day printing is actually slower by going with the faster copier. It sounds kind of strange, but that's one thing to really kind of keep in mind is the more short jobs you have, the less speed matters. The more long jobs you have, the more speed matters. So if you're doing 2,000 page you know, reports or 1,000 page reports or even 200 page reports, suddenly going 70 pages per minute starts making more sense because it's taking three minutes to do that job instead of six on a 30 page per minute. And so that's something to keep in mind is basically the longer your jobs are, the more important speed is, the shorter your jobs are, the less important speed is. Um, with that being said, there's also duty cycle considerations. If it's basically uh, 10,000, 20,000 pages per month, you're still probably gonna wanna go to a higher end model just because of the, the print volume, not because of the speed requirements. So that's another thing to consider. And I hope this has been useful to you because you know, that's part of our goal here as a copy release center is to provide great information to our clients. And so if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to give us a call. We always work to get you a fair copy release and we'd love to chat with you. Thank you so much.